Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the People Show. Check the post rescue nation brought to you by Nebraska Spine Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm joined by a special guest. He was a member of the 70 and 71 national championship teams with the Huskers. He is from Alliance, Nebraska. Mr. Randy Borg, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing fine. How are you, sir? I'm glorious. Um, so a couple weeks ago, Huskers had the open practice, and you approached me. And you're like, I got an idea for a show because there's a little known fact about the 71 National Championship team. There was a very, uh, there was a person who was quite motivational, inspirational, and I don't think enough people are aware of this story. And I'm going to let you tell the gist of the story, but it's about a former Husker named Rex Lowe who passed away shortly after that Orange Bowl game versus Alabama, Paul Bear Bryant, in 72 New Year's Day, but for the 71 National Championship. Uh, he, he lost his battle with, with Hodgkin's disease, but very inspirational for the 71 National Championship team. And he actually did play in the 69 Sun Bowl. But I'm going to let you tell the story, and I'm going to let you inform the fans, because I, I, I don't think this story is well known enough, and uh, you know it better than I, so go ahead. Rex was part of a group of kids that Devaney recruited out of Wisconsin. Um, we recruited a lot out of the Midwest, both coasts. But Jimmy Anderson, Jerry Taggy, David Mason, Rex Lowe, those are the names that come to mind, and they were all from the state of Wisconsin. On the 71 team, Jerry Taggy, at quarterback, and Jimmy Anderson at right corner were the team captains. And when I could walk, went down there and walked on as a freshman, we had freshman ball. I really wasn't associated with Rex Lowe, didn't eat at the training table, had no idea who a man in the world he was. But once our season started, we opened up with Oregon, and that was one of the games we were on national TV. Both Taggy and Anderson mentioned Rex by name, and I found out later, I was asking, tell me about Rex Lowe. He said, well, he was a record-setting wide receiver from Wisconsin. He came down to Nebraska. He finally he lost some energy and was losing weight. They couldn't keep the weight on him. And cancer research and, and stuff back then was not as good. So they went in and did some blood studies, and they defined that they thought he had Hodgkin's and sent him to Mayo's. So he spent all of our 71 season in Mayo's. And Jimmy and, and Jerry would call him from time to time. And at the at the pregame speech, the coaches get done. The captains have the last word. We go out. They mentioned they'd talk to Rex. And Rex was looking forward to watching us on TV. So you guys play extra hard for Rex because he's going to be critiquing you. In that Oregon game, you'd mentioned to me earlier that defensive coordinator Monty Kiffin, you know, you guys were doing two-a-days. You were doing them in the heat. And obviously, you know, you're talking to Rex, he's inspirational, but kind of how that heat paid off in that Oregon game. Um, we, how, you know, we, we Monty was the quite the, August, and it is Monty, hot. it's 95 yeah, every day. Monty was quite the fast pace. I had, he was my coach at the senior bowl and man, I couldn't understand, but one out of every three words he said, I assume he was like that back then as well. Is that correct? He, he goes a hundred miles an hour and he's one of the most motivational coaches I've ever been involved with. We used to scrimmage one-on-ones, and we'd always do it down at the goal line to try to prevent yeah. injuries. And if we stopped them on any play, any play, he would always stood back of the end zone and watch for the holes to open and stuff. And he would come running and dive on the pile and try and stick it to the offense and do a little chest bumping and a little talking and stuff about who stopped who and stuff. And, and you just looked at him, you smiled, but you went, man, he cares. Why shouldn't I care? For sure. And he was actually quite uh... – uh, integral in, in starting the black shirts, and he was the coordinator defensively when they started doing the black shirts. Um, and then you'd mentioned how Rex had, you know, he was kind of motivational for that Oregon game, which is why I brought that up, and then also for the yeah. Orange Bowl later on well, down the road. That, that, that uh, fall ball in August, it's 100 degrees, it's every day. We were going through two days, going through two days. And Kiffin got us together one time in the afternoon before the second practice. The heat's just rolling off the astral turf. And he said, gentlemen, these two days are going to win this game for us. We're going through hell right now. You guys just keep sucking it up. We'll back off you at the day before the game or two. And Oregon, we've been checking their weather reports. They're practicing 72-degree weather up in the northwest. If they come in here and we're lucky enough to get a hot day, this is going to work in our favor. And sure enough, it's 95, bright sunshine, not a cloud in the sky. And they bring in Dan Fouts, Ahmad Rashad, uh, Leland Glass, Tom Graham. They brought in a bunch of studs, and they thought they were going to roll into town and uh, have a very good game, and they didn't. Now Rex was Rex was motivational in that game as well as throughout the season. He even received the game ball for the Kansas game in the Orange Bowl. 
But what kind of inspiration did he provide for that game and then later on throughout the season as well? Well, the, co- the, the, the team captains would mention they'd talk to him, and they would bring that up every time when they had the last word before we went on the field. Now, for all of the people now, back when we played, we were only on TV about three or four times a year. So Oregon was the opening game. Um, Vanny was a defending cha- national champion. We are trying to defend it, and so they put it on national TV. It was a big big game with with uh, Oregon coming to town with Fouts and uh, then the next game we had was Colorado now we're in the big eight at that time and the big eight footprint allowed the tv sh- the big eight game of the week to be shown only in the big eight footprint uh, Rochester Minnesota was in the big 10 footprint so they loaded Rex up in, a, in an ambulance took him down to a hotel in northern Iowa where he could watch the game so they mentioned before the Colorado game once again Rex is going to be critiquing you you better go out there and hustle and, and bust your ass because he will be critiquing you today because he's watching it on TV. And that was really what kind of got him through everything he was dealing with and dealing with Hodgkin's disease and dealing with being in Mayo, which is a great facility, but obviously oh. you know, it can be a little challenging mentally. So that Nebraska football team and season meant a lot to him, correct? Yes, it meant. And later on in the story down at the Orange Bowl, we finally learned exactly what it meant to him. So we play OU in the game of the century. We win there. We go out to Hawaii and play. We come back, and we're out at Dade Junior Community College getting ready to play Alabama. And it's the, it's the last day we're at Dade. The following night, we're going down to the Orange Bowl for a walkthrough, and the next day is the game. And we're running wind sprints, and Jimmy Anderson says to me, when we get done with wind sprints, you follow me. We're not, we're, we're not stopping. And I said, what are you talking about? Next thing I know, there's another ambulance that pulled up next to the one that's been there every day, all practice for catastrophic injury. And I remember thinking to myself, why are they bringing two ambulances down here? Yeah. Well, it was car- it was carrying Rex. We got done with the wind sprints, followed Jimmy Anderson. We were the first ones to the back of the ambulance. And they pulled Rex out. And Jimmy reached down and hugged him. Well, Rex was just smiling ear to ear. And uh, he said, who's this guy? He says, this is Randy Borg, the guy I've been telling you about. And Rex acted like he had been talking or said something about me. I was so proud. But that's the first first time the absolute first time my eyes ever laid on rex low but i said here's the guy behind the story here's the guy that's laying in mayos here's the guy that that uh, gets to go down and go to the watch the oregon game on national and then go down to northern iowa for colorado and obviously oklahoma was on tv and all the players came over and all the older ones obviously knew him much more intimately than uh, us young freshmen and he wasn't like in a wheelchair or walking. He was like on a stretcher. He was on a stretcher. Yeah. They had done some. Uh, um, they'd done some medicine that was kind of uh, new at the time, and he had lesions, open lesions on both arms and all his legs. They were wrapped in this in this kind of gauze wrapped stuff, and you could see, which coming out by his wrist, you could see the lesions. So he, the, the medicine had been causing uh, his skin to break out all over everywhere. Even for and, that orange bowl. He was bowl. smiling and so happy down there. Even for that orange bowl, he was there in a stretcher. And it even meant a lot to Devaney and a lot of the players, oh. him in the locker room before and afterwards as well, right? Well, we, we, got, we, got, we bust down there for the orange bowl. It's raining like hell. Um, we go in and get dressed, Johnny and I, and are going out with Sanger and Jimmy Anderson to catch punts, and Warren Powers holds us in the uh, tunnel. He said, it's pouring rain out there. There's no reason to go out there and practice in this garbage. It's going to be tough enough playing in it. And the next thing you know, there comes Rex. His handlers or his uh, nurses are pushing him down. The, they're going to hold him in the tunnel. Didn't think anything about it. Jimmy and I kneeled down, talked to him pretty soon. Warren Powers, Devaney came down and said, Warren, haven't you got that rain stopped? And so he came down the aisle the uh, tunnel and said hello to us and went by and he disappears to the right and pretty soon Warren Powers is yelling at us to get up there we go up there and and Devaney had made eye contact with Bear Bryant standing at the end of their tunnel smoking a heater and they meet halfway at the end of the end zones and they're under an overhang and they Powers said would you love to hear that conversation and it wasn't 30 seconds after they got together the rain quit and it never rained the rest of the night they got that. They did their little rain dance where they talked directly oh, to the they, big guy and they, they got him to, to stop. The big man and yeah. said, hey, we got some business to, put, to do tonight, and we'd just appreciate it if you didn't have any rain down here. Now, obviously, so we, the, the, you guys go on to win 38 to 6 in the Orange Bowl. And in the locker room afterwards, there was a pretty cool moment. There's a picture out there where Johnny Rogers hands him the ball. Talk about that moment and also talk about Devaney. This particular game meant a little bit more to Devaney, not just a national championship, but because of who they beat, you guys beat in the game. 
I'm going to go off base just one moment, the pregame. We come in after we're ready to go out there, and we're ready to tear the walls off the place. And the coaches speak. They leave to go to the sidelines or upstairs. The captains speak, and then they said Rex would like to address the team. And a door opens, and here comes Rex. And you could drop a pin in that locker room. And he thanks us for letting him be part of the team. He thanks us for making the lonely nights in, in uh, Rochester bearable. He thanks us for, for, for allowing him to, to be part of it, at least mentally, because it meant so much to him. Now, here's a guy laying on a stretcher with the open sores on both legs and both arms. He's thanking us. We're, we're, we're perfectly healthy athletes going out to play for the national championship. It should have been the other way around. Every player in that locker room went by, said a hello, tapped him on the shoulder. The Wisconsin gang hugged him and kissed him. It, and, and we went out of there. Usually we'd break down the doors. You've been in locker rooms. Yeah. We walked out as a group, walked down the tunnel and jogged to the sidelines. Giffen was thought something was up. He goes, John Dutton. He said, what the heck is going on? Dutton says, coach, don't worry about it. We've got this. So we, we win the game. We come in the locker room afterwards. The press hasn't been in there yet. And Coach Devaney finally divulges that he wanted to win that game more than any game he's ever coached. It was for a national championship. He had been beaten by Bryant in 66 and 67. And that, that had taken us out of the national championship. And he wanted to win a national championship. And especially, he wanted to do it against Bear Bryant. Pretty big win. Pretty cool moment. Talk about Rodgers. Because... As we mentioned, you know, Rex unfortunately passed away about three months after this game, but he got the yep. game ball for Kansas, and talk about Rodgers giving him the game ball here. Well, afterwards, afterwards, John had a great game and everything, and uh, we had decided that we would give one game ball out, and it would be given to Rex Lowe. And John Rogers, there's an iconic picture of him actually going over to present the ball, and he says, oh, what the hell, and he just laid down on the stretcher with him, and they have a picture of that. It's just, it's just, it's true teammate to teammate i love you uh, I'll, I'll, I'll you know um mutual sacrifice for goals by the team going through two a days it's just it just it, it enshrined every feeling we had as a team man i i just felt like enough people did not know this story quite motivational um inspirational just a very cool story as far as the team unfortunate you know obviously rex passing away then he passed away a few months after that talk about yeah. Because obviously this was a big deal to Devaney, and you talked about um, with me previously about how qu kind of quiet he was for being such a fiery Irishman in these moments. And I'm just kind of curious because obviously he, I didn't know Devaney. He had his moments where he could turn it yeah. on. You know that fire came on. But Do at you that have point a his, behind the scenes point story? In his career. Well, yeah, about, the about Devaney State story. Yeah. We're over at Iowa State, and we're freshmen on my freshman team. We were playing Iowa State's freshman on a Friday afternoon. Then the varsity comes in and plays on Saturday. But they did a walkthrough. And at halftime, I think we were up 14-10 or something, and Devaney comes walking in the locker room with Jim Ross. The varsity had arrived to watch the second half and then do their walkthrough. And Coach Ross, all he said when he walked in, he says, gentlemen, Coach Devaney would like to address you. And, man, he ripped us up one side and down the other. He said, that effort in the first half, I understand, wasn't very good. You guys set the tone. You let Iowa State hang around with us. That's going to set a bad precedence for the entire damn weekend. So we went, uh-oh, the big man showed up, and we have got to go out there and give it a good effort. Beat him by four or five touchdowns. And afterwards, he came in and said, that's what I wanted to see. It makes a lot of sense because if the freshman Iowa State team oh. can play with the freshman Nebraska team, all of a sudden on Saturday, now their varsity team thinks they can play with the Nebraska varsity it team. Gives them a, gives them a yeah. glimmer of hope, and we wanted to give them no glimmer of hope. It's about setting a tone, sending a message. Exactly. It's about an expectation of how you play. So that's pretty cool. I, I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for approaching me about this. And uh, I, I appreciate you joining me here on the show today. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. Until next time, Husker Nation, go Big Red. And always remember to throw the bones. Thanks again to our sponsor, Nebraska Spine Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, when it's your spine, you do not want to mess around and experience matters. That's why you can trust the experts at Nebraska Spine Hospital, the region's only spine-specific hospital. They are the best at what they do.